You were watching the Jays game yesterday and noticed something there with Whit Merrifield. Well, yeah, we'll get to Whit in a second. But last week, we were talking about hard hit balls, right? Yes, Remember yes, yes. Correa? Hard hit velocity, yeah, and, yeah. And so in our meeting, I started thinking about this. I'm like, well, what people are not understanding is if I'm going to defend, and they say Adnan hits every ball at third base. Mm -hmm. So I'm going to stand my guy at third base, and I'm going to say, hit it as hard as you want. I don't care. <laughs> he's at 116 miles an hour. You know where he's sitting? Mm -hmm. Right next to me on the bench. Because I played you positionally how I'm supposed to play it. Right. So I want to look at a map real quick of Carlos Correa, because we were talking about Correa. And as I got a chance to see Correa, um, it was, he hit a few balls hard, and, you know, we're in the meeting. He was struggling. They're like, well, yeah, but his hit ball rate is really high. Right, hard hit. So hard I think hit. the thought is hard hard hit, hit ball. the harder you hit it, the better chance you have of getting yeah. it. And I get it. Everybody tries to hit the ball hard. Correct. want to square it up. Yeah. But we forget there's a defense playing behind you. Mm. So when you look at Carlos Correa, all right, here it is. Let's look at his hit, hard hit ball. Where do I think I want my shortstop to play? These are all the balls he's hitting. Mm -hmm. Not even hard hit. This is where he's hitting the ball. I'm going to play in this range. And if I'm playing in the outfield, I'm going to shade him to right. Because look at where all the balls he's hitting. So when he's hitting the ball, this is what you do. You study where is a guy's tendencies is what right. we're talking about. Mm -hmm. So when they have tendencies, I put my man where I think he's going to tend to hit it, right, <laughs> with a tendency. Yeah. All right, so I want to go to video. Check this out, all right? So this is the big thing that I think people are forgetting. All right, let's watch. We'll start off with Carlos Correa since we were talking about him last night. So look, I'm going to shave my defense to right center because I'm playing his own. He hits a rocket to the right fielder. But Carlos is sitting next to you on the bench. <laughs> Why? Because I defended him properly. That's 110 miles an hour off the bench. Mm -hmm. But he's out. There is a defense. We're playing a game, people. This is 117 miles an hour off the bat. He's out. Nice job, way to swing it, but just sitting next to me. The point is, yes, guys are hitting balls hard. That's a rocket, 115 miles an hour. But I put my defense in the right spot. If I have a great analytical department, this is where you do me the best. Where is he going to tend to hit the ball? Mm -hmm. What can you predict for me? I predict he's going to hit the ball here because that's what he's been doing. So I put my man in a spot, and so now I'm pitching the game. If I know that Ronald Acuna Jr. is going to pull everything, why am I throwing him to hit it away from my defense? No. You don't. You, you want him to hit the ball to your defense. But here's my issue. You were an elite defender. You were a two-time Gold Glove Three. Sorry. Three times. Excuse me. But imagine <laughs> who's counting. Is there not a big difference between a ball hit at you 90 miles an hour versus 110? Because I think the thought process is if you are not an elite yeah. defender, therefore that ball will be tougher to handle. Well, I get it. Yeah. But I would rather have it hit 110 miles an hour at me in the right area right. and making my location with my pitches than not, than having him hit 110 the other direction where nobody's at. Yeah. Let's take Correa. If he hits that ball left center field instead of right center, that's a triple. Right. But I'm gambling on the fact he's going to hit as hard as he wants. Why? Because I'm going to throw him a fastball out there mm -hmm. that he's going to hit to my defense. Right. That's how you defend it. I remember Harold Baines used to hammer the ball pulled, and they'd be standing the guy in left center field. I'd be like, why would they sit over there? And he'd hit a fly ball over there all the time. Or I'd be playing against Cal Ripken, and it took me years to realize, hold it, that ground ball I keep hitting him is by design. The pitcher wants me to hit the ball that way, mm -hmm. left-handed, at Cal, who's standing there. And I'd be like, I rocketed that ball. <laughs> But I'm out. It, it's kind of like pitching, location more important than speed. And this is just saying positioning more important than velocity. Absolutely. Yeah. And I want, you know, hey, I'm going to put you where my defense is at, and I expect you to hit the ball hard at me. Right. It's okay. Now, another thing that I saw. Yeah. We were talking about Whit Merrifield. Mm -hmm. um, it's not even Whit as much as our second baseman on pivots are getting wrapped up in the fact that the rules are he's not going to touch me. And whether you go down to college or whatever, the footwork's getting sloppy. And as the footwork gets sloppy, so does handling the ball. And so now they have a tendency to reach, catch, turn, and throw because I can sit back and gun it as hard as I can, and they're not getting rid of the ball. And as a result, I'm seeing a lot of guys dropping balls. So let's roll video, and I'm going to get in place. I'm going to do a demo off of this yeah. because you're going to get a chance to see what I'm talking about. Uh -huh. But here's some plays right now that guys are getting ground balls on. That's a double play ball right there. we got to turn that. That, that's an easy turn when the third baseman is coming to you. This is a tough one. Tough pick, gets ready to turn it. But again, he's in a hurry because we're not used to guys getting on top of us. Right here, 
This has got to be turned. Colton Wong, Gold Glover, got caught in his glove, and that's what happens, okay? Didn't, wasn't able to turn it. This ball hit by Springer. Let's turn this double play. You anticipate a bad throw. It was a bad throw in and weren't able to do it. But this is the one I want to focus on. Wet Merrifield, he's a really good defending second baseman. He's got a nice double play pivot. But this is more of a teaching lesson than necessarily hammering him. Look at where his hands are separated. When your hands are separated by this much, you are going to have to now take that ball out of the glove, which he catches in the web, and bring down to your bare hand. And that's where you lose it on the transfer. Now, that's one of many that I've been able to see. All right, so let's pan the camera real quick so you can just see Adnan playing shortstop for me. He's over here picking it for me, flipping it to me. All right, so I'm just going to have him flip some balls to me. And here's what it should look like at home. If I'm catching a double play, all right, go ahead, Adnan, just yep. throw it to me. I want my hands together like this, all right? See how I'm handling my hands together? I'll show you a little quick drill real quick that you can do. Good friend of mine, name is Jack Riley. He was a baseball coach at Oregon State for years. He used to tell me, do you like this? That forced me to get both hands together. See that? In, out, wherever. Now I got both hands together. And if they're able to do this, now I'm able to transfer and get rid of the ball. The other thing I talked about was guys are getting lazy because you're not thinking this guy's going to hit you. You got to always expect he's going to hit me and I want to get out of the way. So what we were always taught to do on a pivot is you get here and even when you're just throwing it, get up in the air. Get up, all right? I'm going to come across even on that one. I'm going to get up and make a throw every time. Both hands together, get up. All right, and as I make this throw, now I don't care, whoa. I yes. could, that one took me back. <laughs> I used the bag to protect me. Yep. But I'm playing with my feet. That's the key. And as I use my feet, my hands get quicker as well. All right, here it is. Ground ball, boom, double play in the air, boom, double play. That's it. Catch it, get rid of it, get in the air. I'm tired. <laughs> Harold Rose breaking it down like it needs to be broken.